This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. So, the final piece within the jigsaw, step number five. Remember, step number four was to go through there and identify the contract. Step number two was to go through there and look at the performance obligations. Step number three was to look at the transaction price. Step number four was to allocate the transaction price across the separate performance obligations. And now we get to the crunch, the nitty gritty, the, the recognizing the debits and the credits as we then look at recognizing the revenue within the financial statements. So what we need to go through and do that is look at the different performance obligations and look at whether or not that obligation is settled at a point in time or over a period of time. So with our example previously with the entertainment system, uh, the actual entertainment system itself, the performance obligation was taking place at a single point in time. Yeah, when that good is sold, that's when the control is transferred, isn't it, to the customer. So therefore you recognize it at the point in time of the sale. However, when you go through there and look at the actual repair and maintenance or uh, the repair and correction of any damage that there may be, that's over a period of two years. So you're going to have to recognize that over that period of time from when we entered into the transaction to when that two year period is complete. So let's go through and have a look at the example, shall we? Uh, it goes through here and wants us to explain how the revenue should be recognized in Telefonica's financial statements. So the explanation is just gonna take us through the, the five separate steps, okay? So identifying the contract, looking at the performance obligations, looking at the transaction price, looking there at the allocation of the transaction price and then the recognition. I'm not going to focus on the debits and credits just yet. That's just a step too far. I just want to focus on the recognizing the goods at a point in time and the services over a period of time. So what have we got? Uh, here it tells us about Telefonica selling mobiles, allegedly selling them for free if you sign up to a 12-month contract uh, and you pay $45 per month which sounds quite a lot doesn't it okay for a, for a free phone uh and then the these minutes it's a lot for the for the minutes and the data that you get on top isn't it well effectively that's because the phone isn't free you're actually paying 45 dollars per month part of that is towards the cost of the phone and then the rest of it is across the data and the minutes okay uh so what we need to be able to do is we need to separate it out don't we there is a contract there's two performance obligations, the phone, and is it the, the data and the minutes? The transaction price, well, we have a 12-month contract at $45 per month. So tapping that onto your calculator, is it $540? We'll see on the next slide, but I think it is. Uh, and then what we need to do is we need to allocate that $540 uh, across the goods and across the services. How are we going to do that? Well, with the standalone prices. Um, the standalone prices are here from one of our competitors, Vodafone, uh, whereby they sell the phone separately for $480, which sounds a little bit more like it. And then the data and the calls are $20 per month. Again, we're keeping it as simple as possible. Uh, ignore discounting and the time value of money. Okay. So what have we got? Let's take our way through those five steps i think the first one is reasonable isn't there there's a contract uh telefonica supplies the customer with a contract and the customer signs it and says that they're going to pay you 45 dollars per month for the next 12 months uh we've identified the performance obligations the sale of the handset and the calls and data service we then need to determine the transaction price, which we've mentioned already, haven't we? It's a contract for 12 months. We're paying $45 for each of those 12 months. So $540. The next step is to allocate it. Allocate it across the handset, being the goods and the call and data usage. What are we going to use? The standalone prices, aren't we? Here, 
we're going to use Vodafone because that's the information that's given to us within the question. So here, if you look at the total standalone price, uh, and this sort of brings into the reasons why you combine the services with the goods on the actual sale and try and incentivize the customer. Because if you were going to go through there and buy them separately, it cost a lot more money, wouldn't it? Yeah, and you probably wouldn't make as much revenue if you sold them separately because the customer would just take the, the phone and maybe get the data and calls from elsewhere. So it, it, it's, a, it's a marketing tool, isn't it, by selling them together. I'm not worried about the marketing. I'm worried about the accounting. And here you've got the phone at $480 and 12 months at $20. So the total standalone price is 720. So we're going to use that as the denominator in our fraction. For the mobile phone handsets, that costs 480. So that's the numerator. So 480 divided by 720. You can tap that into your calculator. I think it's two thirds. Correct me if I'm wrong. And multiply that by the 540. That gives you $360. The calls and data, well, the denominator that you have there is 720, it remains the same. The numerator is the fact that you've got the standalone call and data package, 12 months at $20 each. Okay, so is that 240? 240 divided by 720 should be the remaining third. Allocate that to the 540 and you get $180. Let's check. 360, 180, 540. We've done it right. Because hopefully, if you've allocated it and split it out correctly, that the two combined final allocated prices should equal the transaction price. If it doesn't, you've done something wrong. Uh, so, in terms of them recognizing the revenue, uh, so the goods, the handset, the $360 will be recognized immediately on entering into the contract because the phone has gone and the control has passed. Uh, in terms of the data and the calls, that service is done over a 12-month period, isn't it? So you would recognize a 12th of that 180 equally over the 12 months of the contract. Okay, there we go. So what I would recommend that you do now uh, is we've got a couple of examples to, to follow on after this. Uh, but before you attempt any of those and I talk your way through them, just go into the study text. Uh, of your chosen tuition provider. Read through what they've written. Have a go at the examples within there because it's good additional practice. And then have a go at the examples that we've provided in here. And hopefully once you've done that, you should find yourself a little bit more comfortable with the different type of transactions that you can expect to find within an exam. And therefore that will make you better at understanding that five-step revenue recognition process. So I'll see you once you've done all of that work.